Hello everybody, welcome back to another light novel review. Today I'm going to be talking about volume number 5 in Satoshi Wagahara's light novel series, The Devil is a Part-Timer. This book picks up almost immediately after The Devil and Company have returned from the beachside resort that they were working at, and their apartment has now been repaired, and when they get into the apartment they realize that it has now been wired for HDTV. So... Saramao makes the decision. He's like, you know what? I think we should get a TV since we've got a little bit of extra cash because we all worked at this resort and we all sort of got paid out even though we had to leave early. We should maybe get a TV. And he, he brings up a whole bunch of reasons that he justifies why it's worth the money because, of course, you know, LCL doesn't want them spending the money because he's so tight on the budget and everything else. But he manages to finally convince them all that you know, they can afford to get one on the cheap. And so begins the grand shopping excursion with Suzuno in tow because she decides that mm, maybe she'd like to get a TV too since her apartment apparently has been wired for the HDTV as well. And, well, nothing ever that the devil does that seems mundane and normal would turn out to be normal. There are some very strange events going on in Japan and they seem to be revolving around TV signals. And of course you know that that means that the devil and company are going to be pulled in. I really love this series and I mean if you've been watching my videos over the, the last year and a half or so that I've been reviewing nothing but light novels, you know that I'm always happy to get another volume of The Devil as a Part-Timer because the characters in this one are just so much fun and the way that they bicker with each other and yet there's still this underlying affection for one another. It's it's a really good series in terms of the characters and the way they interact with each other. Unlike some of the light novels that I've read, each of the characters has a very distinct, even the way that their speech patterns are written in the book. So every character is very distinctly themselves and they have very distinct characteristics that they belong to only them. You don't have that situation where all the characters just kind of bleed together. I also appreciate that we don't keep getting inundated with new characters every single volume, which seems to sometimes happen. And I had some fear that this book would become either a slash harem or that it would become just a monster bad guy of the week type novel and that it would get somewhat boring over time. I'm really happy at this point that that hasn't happened. We don't have an expanding harem. The female characters have enough conflicting emotions about Mao to keep them from ever sort of just becoming the lovey-dovey, you know, really stereotypical harem members. And yes, even though we have sort of a different villain, if you will, every single volume... They all tie together and they all tie into this much bigger story that in this volume in particular, we have a lot of hints at. And I wouldn't even say they're hints. Like this volume, maybe even more than the volumes before it, comes right out and sort of starts to state exactly what the big stakes are in this series. And I think they're maybe even a little bigger than what we thought. And we start to get the impression in this book, I mean, it's it's stated in a fairly straight-ahead way, that there is even more to the reason that Mao and company ended up on Earth on in Tokyo than just random chance. That there's a reason his portal brought him here. There's a reason that others have been able to follow him. And... I really like how this story has been able to build this bigger sort of idea without being really overt about it. We've had little breadcrumbs throughout some of the earlier volumes, and these last sort of two or three volumes, that's getting bigger and bigger. The reveals are coming now. We're sort of being introduced to characters that have been mentioned earlier in the series, but we've never actually really interacted with them. And this one... We finally start to interact with some of those characters. We start to find out that Wagahara is writing a very different version of Heaven 
Although I find what's interesting is that at the same time he seems to be rewriting some religion or questioning religion, in this book he actually does make the argument that the Japanese, regardless of appearances, are very religious and spiritual people and sort of discusses why that is and justifies why that is. So on the one hand, while well, you see that he definitely questions some aspects of religion, on the other hand, he seems quite determined to justify it and to discuss it in a more open fashion and to discuss who do you acknowledge as a god or and there's one statement in here that I really liked and they said that I can't remember who exactly was having the discussion but they basically said that the whole idea of a god who says love thy neighbor but then allows you to kill people or for there to be violence isn't really a god and then someone says well if they're not a god then what are they and someone says human and that seems to be sort of a purveying idea throughout this series and the lines blurring between humans who have these incredible powers angels who have powers demons who have powers he really is building a much bigger idea and theme here than i would say that i actually ever thought was going to happen i mean when you just read the title the devil is a part-timer and you hear that the demon lord satan is working at um, basically a mcdonald's i mean they call it mcronald's so i guess how to avoid copyright infringement, kids. Just name it something completely different and then serve a couple of Japanese dishes instead of Big Macs. But in any case, I really like that this series seems to be getting at bigger ideas and bigger themes and a bigger story than what you would probably give it credit for. And as I said, I really appreciate the fact that that story is being built incrementally, bit by bit, and that the villains each week are, even though we could sort of say, oh, well, it's just a monster of the week. No, they're actually serving a purpose to further that underlying story and that bigger story that's been hinted at and building and building and building. And you can really see that this is coming to a head, I think, soon, because the events of this book definitely, well, they definitely set up a lot. And again, when I talk about light novels on this channel and we start getting into volumes, you know, later volumes, four, five, six, like, it is great when you have a series like this one that every volume is just building and building and building bit by bit and it just really pulls you along and keeps you interested. And like I said, when you've got such a great cast of characters and even the odd new character that's introduced becomes very interesting and integral to the cast... It's a really, really good series, and like I said, I don't know if it gets the fair shake because of the title, and because even the illustrations on the covers make it look like it's slightly an oddball comedy, and you will definitely laugh. I mean, it is definitely comedic, but there are a lot of bigger ideas in this series than what I, uh, I ever thought there would be. So those are my thoughts on volume number five of The Devil is a Part-Timer. Next week, I'm going to be reviewing volume number four of The Rising of the Shield Hero. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all of my future light novel reviews, including future volumes of The Devil is a Part-Timer. Uh, you can click on subscribe above or in the description down below. I also, of course, have done a ton of light novel reviews, which you can check out above, as well as my manga reviews. And I don't just read books, I like to write them as well. I've got links to my books up above as well. So thanks very much for watching the video. I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next one. Until then, bye-bye for now.